Over the past few months, I have been intensely focused on finding a way to shred HDPE plastic like the pros do. I gave myself the added challenge of not using my industrial gearbox here, and I also tried to avoid a lot of custom-made parts like what you see here, which is required for the single shaft shredder design by Dave of Precious Plastics. I love that design, but I thought it was kind of expensive for the DIY market. And again, wanting to avoid expensive options, I put a lot of effort into finding a way to shred it without spending very much money, which included me spending a lot of money. But the interesting thing is, uh, all along the way, many of you said that much processing was not required. They didn't have to shred it quite so much, and you could still get good blocks of HDPE plastic. And I thought, you know, if the professionals are shredding it, you know, certainly I need to shred it. But then one of my neighbors sent me this. This is HDPE plastic, which has been shred in an industrial shredder. This brought about the perfect opportunity to test where the plastic, which has been shredded to the industrial standard, would actually be better than plastic that has been processed more minimally in a home environment. So over this past week, I have been trying many different methods for processing this plastic, using as little effort and cutting as possible. I want to pull up a little closer to the bench and walk you through what I've tried and uh, let's talk about the results. Okay, I thought I'd start by telling you how I processed each one of these samples. And then we'll take these over to the band saw, cut them open for the real test, which is seeing how solid and consistent it is on the inside. This comes from a red watering can, which was HDPE. You can tell by looking at it that I processed this very, very little. Just to give you an example, the pieces uh, look something like this. I left the corners. I didn't go through much effort to make it flat. I left some of the ridges process for this one was I took uh, this pan which looked a lot better before all of my testing it was just about new I took some parchment paper put it inside of course this is all used and dried out now I put all the loose pieces inside of there and then I put another tray on top the same size tray so that they fit uh, nest inside of each other and then I also put these weights inside. All of these samples were baked at 350 degrees except for the uh, professionally shredded plastic and I'll tell you about that when I get to it. So I put weights in the pan, I left it in there for about an hour, then I took it out and I noticed that the plastic was sticking to the bottom of the pan. Uh, you can see here. So I went back, I put another layer of parchment paper in between and then I sandwiched them back together like so. Uh, after about, uh, this whole process took maybe uh, two or three hours. I wasn't watching it rigorously. I'd walk away for a while, work on something else, and then come back and check on it. Occasionally I would open it and push over the sides a little bit, but other than that, that was all I really did to it. In the end, uh, the plastic, of course, was on the inside. And I put two clamps on the outside right after I took it out of the oven, and I left it clamped for a couple of hours. The next sample, is this guy. I put a little bit more effort into this, but the original pieces were similar to what I just showed you. I took a lot of pieces like this, just milk jugs that weren't cut up very much. I only cut it a couple times on the bandsaw to get these very large rough shaped pieces. I used a larger pan, but most of the rest of the effort was the same. The tricky part about this was it took a lot more time to get all the plastic into the container. Uh, and the reason was because the pieces were so large and unruly, this would kind of be cocked up like this. It never quite, it didn't quite sit flat. So I did put all the weights on the inside and over time it would sink down as it melted. And then I would open it up, put a few more pieces in, press it down. In my opinion, that took quite a, a long time. The effort that I saved by not cutting it into smaller pieces was just spent trying to get all the pieces back into the can. So this method was not nearly as efficient in my opinion. Now you'll see that there's parchment paper stuck in here. I didn't go through any special effort to try to prevent that, but I think with a little bit of practice and uh, or maybe using something else as a non-stick surface and not parchment paper, then uh, that could be mitigated. So while you see uh, these residues of parchment paper stuck in here, 
I think with a little bit of practice, we can mitigate that problem. This guy is very large sheets like this. So I took a container. I had a whole bunch of these plastic food containers that I've been saving up. I only cut them a couple times, but because of their shape, I was able to lay these very flat inside the pan. I nested them using their natural shape as flat as I could get it. And then the bottom pieces, I did the same thing. I just kind of scattered those inside the pan. And then I used the same process, 350 degrees, parchment paper on the bottom, parchment paper on top, the next pan on top of that one. I put a few weights inside and then I just let it melt. This was definitely minimal processing. So this is looking good for those who told me I didn't need to put much effort into it. The next one I want to show you is the one I'm most pleasantly surprised with. And that is the plastic that came from the most recent shredder concept. Uh, I'm calling it a concept because it is not nearly done. It needs a lot more work to make it safe and useful for daily, for regular use. But the concept is surprisingly good. There are a couple other modifications that I want to make, which I'll tell you more about here shortly. If you haven't seen that video, the material came out looking something like this. Uh, we had these long strands, many of them were much longer than this. And then what was the equivalent of sawdust in the bottom, just this plastic dust. I took all of that and dumped it in a pan following the same process. I clamped it when I was done and that was baked at 350 degrees and then left to cool overnight. Although I'm sure that, you know, three or four hours would probably be fine. And this is really solid and uniform. And then we have this guy. This is the industrially shredded plastic. And all I did, as you probably can guess, is I just poured this into the bottom, kind of patted it down so it was relatively flat. Another pan on top with parchment paper. And then I also put the weights inside of it. After about an hour and a half at 350 degrees, I opened it up kind of dusted it around like that. Of course it was hot, so I was trying to barely touch it, but it was kind of like grains of rice. It, it wasn't sticking, it was just dry. It, it looked, it didn't look like it was affected by the 350 degrees. So I turned it up to 450 degrees. I left it in there for another two hours and I came back. It didn't quite look like it was really melting. So I was like, I, I thought for a second, maybe I need to go a higher temperature, I'm not sure. And it was getting late. I just said, forget it. I'm going to clamp it up like it is and leave it. Well, when I took it out of the pan the next morning, I was pleasantly surprised. This actually looks really good. I did not expect it to mesh so well. Uh, this one required the least amount of effort during the heating process. I just poured it in. And if we figure out the right melting temperature and things like this for this particular plastic here, it might be a slightly different variation of HDPE. Uh, actually it is, I just can't remember what it's called, but I'll put the name on the screen for you because uh, the gentleman who sent it to me told me exactly what it was. But there is no doubt that shredded to this level, the uh, melting and bonding process is easier. But enough said about that, let's cut these guys open at the bandsaw. That's looking pretty solid. And looking at the outside, it's kind of surprising that it looks that good on the inside. There's a little bit of a void there, but I think with a little bit of practice and just slightly more effort, uh, I could have closed that gap. So same kind of thing. Quite a bit of it is very solid. That's really impressive. Uh, there's a gap here. You know, I gotta admit, uh, it's looking pretty good for the minimal processing, folks. Uh, we'll find and we'll confirm with the next one in just a second. 
and they're just another small void but otherwise very solid this one actually doesn't look as good as the red one there are some faint voids all along here and that one is not looking nearly as good towards the edge there I don't know all right now we're moving closer to the center here there's a void here a void here Ooh, nice big void there um, I mean it is looking pretty solid but there are a few more examples of void spaces in this one uh, that's the uncut edge oh man all right there's a big gap there that to me to find that is unacceptable I can look down in that hole and see there's definitely a cavity there and there's another one right next to it uh, even though it looks great on the outside if you were going to put this on a lathe now, of course you'd make a thicker block but if you wanted to spin this on the lathe and uh, your tool got caught in that hole you'd likely rip this thing right out of your chuck so I don't know um, not particularly happy to see that one so this one was shredded on the safety police provoking shredder uh, that is looking amazingly solid all the way through I can't spot a single void or cavity and hopefully that is looks like that might be in focus there for you I can't believe I'm gonna say this but the dado shredder is looking like the winner man that is just about perfect and there was very little effort put into this very little effort both in the shredding process all I did was feed it in there and then also in the melting process alright this is the one where I started with big sheets so there is a, a little void here uh, it's not quite that deep and another void uh, that one's a little bit deeper though not liking that one too much on the outside it looks great though and most of it is pretty solid so some of this might be practice right like I'm, I'm taking into consideration that this is not a huge sample size so with a little bit of practice and a more effort in the right places we could get better results right all right all of that is looking really good and then right there there's a big deep void man and then another one right next to it and that side looks beautiful all the way up to that part relatively deep void and one here um, all right that's that's maybe not good and professionally shredded plastic well it's looking very solid except for a pinhole there and a pinhole there wow look how uniform and thick that is though it was not nearly as easy to get the other ones that thick all I had to do is just pour it all in there this side is very solid I can't find a single void on this side so considering the thickness of this piece that's about it let's take a look at the other ones alright once again very very solid I don't know about you but I can't see a single void spot Wow. Well, now we know why they make industrial shredders, right? That is beautiful. Okay. Here are my thoughts. I'm going to say the winners by far is the industrially shredded plastic <laughs> and my dado shredder. I cannot believe that. That is shocking. Um, but this is a preliminary test. I think some of this is practice. So here's where I want to put my efforts now. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my dado shredder. I'm going to put the blades back together, get rid of the spaces and shift up the table to the top so that it cuts more like a table saw with the blade coming towards the plastic 
instead of the blade grabbing it and pulling it away from me. I think that's going to be the, the safest and most effective design. And so I am going to put a little more effort into the shredder, but I think that's as far as I need to go with that. Um, but it could be argued, I think it could be argued that with practice, you can make really good solid blocks with very little processing. The ideal situation in my picture, in the way I'm picturing this situation now to get the ideal results is if you have containers that can be cut into relatively flat pieces, like what I showed you earlier, pieces like this. Of course, you would clean it and get rid of the stuff like this. Press it, and if you are willing to put a little more time into the cooking process, if you will, then uh, you can bypass some of the cutting process. But in my mind, it appears to be that you are really trading one part of your time for another part of your time. And if you have a really good shredder, the cutting process will be really simple. So I'm sort of on the fence about whether it's worth the effort to keep building the shredder, although the most recent shredder design is by far the cheapest design to make. All you need is a motor and some pillow block bearings and, and some saw blades. I got a couple more modifications I want to make to that that I think is going to make it better and still be very, very cheap and affordable. And of course, it's going to have proper guarding and things like that, so there's no way to uh, get your hands in there. Uh, one, other, one other thought, just by looking at these, you will see that there are some tiny brown spots on here. That came from the parchment paper. So I am interested in finding another non-stick method for keeping the plastic from sticking uh, to the metal. But uh, as I mentioned before, the color of the plastic seems to matter in its, uh, in its sticky properties, if you will. So uh, the white plastic didn't stick nearly as much as the red did. Uh, this plastic didn't stick at all. It barely melted. The clear plastic sticks a whole lot. And in fact, I have stopped using that uh, until I find a better way uh, to melt it without it sticking to my pans. I think it's pretty clear that for industrial purposes, you're going to need to shred it up into uh, nice little pellets so that you always get a nice uniform sheet. But if you don't want to make a shredder, you can certainly get this done uh, with very little cutting, just more effort in the heating process. I want to say thanks to Donald for sending me this plastic, this uh, UHMW. Mm, I knew it was going to come back to me. Anyway. Uh, this was a really fun test and when you consider how thick this came out and to still not have any voids uh, that really speaks volumes to the uh, to the, the benefits of shredding so I really want to focus on the heating and cooling process now and I'm going to be trying some other experiments that I have in mind but I'd love to combine your ideas with mine and let's come up with something uh, that makes this process really easy and fluid so that we can get good solid results each time I look forward to speaking with you guys in the comments, and uh, as always, thanks for watching.